Good afternoon, shopkeepers and do-it-yourselfers out there in YouTube land. Today we're working on a 2006 Subaru Tribeca B9. And uh, we'll be putting a lower radiator hose and a thermostat in it. Underneath the car, that's the lower radiator hose. This will be the left front of the car. There's a lower radiator hose, and we're replacing it because it's got a hole in the top. And right here is the thermostat housing on the side of the engine. It's a 3.0 liter, six-cylinder flat opposed engine. And some of you guys don't know what that is, but a flat engine, like a Volkswagen engine, or on a BMW motorcycle, the engine, uh, the cylinders directly oppose one another. So the, the uh, instead of like a, a, I don't know, what a 30 degree angle or whatever, they're exactly 180 degrees apart. One cylinder goes that way and the other one goes that way. But anyway, we're going to replace that thermostat. We'll get that get that housing uh, there's two 10 millimeter head bolts hang on man drop my flashlight some of you may not know it but that's why they call it drop light because you're always dropping them anyway now we're blinding ourselves can't never get them cords to twist right this bolt here and one right up there in the top so we'll uh, Use this small ratchet and uh, break out. My ratchet works pretty fast sometimes. Anyway, there's one of the bolts. Now we'll get to get my pan moved up there. And we'll do the ecological and the economical thing catch that green fluid of course it was already green but in behind the thermostat there'll be if the thermostat is closed which it evidently is uh, there'll be coolant still in the block so that's why it's leaking now we we'll get this top bolt loose and uh, and then that housing will come off yeah it's coming loose real nice I say there's just two bolts, 10 millimeter head. I don't know. There's like, like I don't know what is it. It's like a quarter. I think it's a, like a seven millimeter bolt. Actually, that's the size of the thread. I don't know. 57 years old, and I still don't know what metrics are. Anyway, there's your thermostat up in there. And, uh, and you can see where the radiator hose blew out. So that's why I'm replacing that. I'm replacing the thermostat because the customer wanted me to. There's not really any particular reason. But anyway, well, uh, let's see if we can reach up there with a pair of pliers. and It's just kind of stuck in there. It, There we go. Yeah. There's your thermostat. So we want to make sure and put a new O-ring. It goes around the thermostat. Some of them will go in behind the thermostat, or the thermostat will go in, and then you put the seal in. But anyway, this has got a groove. It goes uh, the, the thermostat goes inside the seal. So it's on both sides. And uh, and you can see it's kind of like off center and it's got a little spitter valve. So you want to put that at the top and let, that lets the, the air bleed out of the block a little easier. And uh, matter of fact, it looks like there's a... Well, let's see. You see those little notches there? That's gonna 
that's going to locate it so it's only going to go a certain way it'll only go in there a certain way and uh, yeah so his, your spitter valve is going to go directly on top and uh, we'll take and get a pick and go in there and kind of scrape out scale and uh, crust build up so we'll get a good seal yeah just kind of go around and clean that up a little bit so that uh, I don't know what that is so antifreeze it just kind of oxidizes there sticks to that aluminum like that kind of cruds up just kind of clean that off and uh, it's your new thermostat they like to say the splitter valve it's got a little see it's flat there so it has a little uh, way it lets the helps bleed the air out of it see just like that. And uh, it'll fit kind of snug in the in the slot. I'm gonna have to use both hands. Okay, I got it in there. Took a little bit of warming, but you got to kind of go around and push the seal inward to get it to drop into place. Now we get this spring off. We'll put the, uh, the pipe back on and then get the hose replaced. I'm going to go ahead and replace this, put this pipe back on. And uh, you can't really squeeze this and slide it over with the pipe on the the thermostat the water outlet because of this this flange right here that comes up or flare you can't really squeeze that tight enough to go over that so i just squeeze it together and pull it out and then i'll put it on and then i'll take note of how the hose is clocked and positioned when i take it off of the radiator and i'll put it on the radiator and then let the hose relax and then I'll put it up back on this and let the, the new hose relax on this and the, and the clock or the position that it is, is less stress. And uh, anyway, we'll get this put back on over the thermostat. And when you get your water outlet pipe on there, thermostat housing, get your bolts in there and come up close to where it's starting to draw it up and look in there and make sure that your thermostat has not fallen out of its seat in which case if it is you're gonna you're gonna have a leak and you'll probably break this housing when you tighten it up so make sure that everything's setting in there like it should and the housing is gonna set flush and then you can get your bolts tightened up now keep in mind fellas that uh, this radiator tank and and uh, hose nipple is plastic, uh, so don't be too uh, aggressive with it. Getting the hose off, uh, best thing to do is get you a good pair of pliers that you can get a hold of the uh, spring clamp and squeeze it together and then start twisting and pulling on the hose with the clamp in place on the hose because just like the other one you can't squeeze it together enough to get it to slide over this hump that's also duplicated there on the edge of that uh, hose pipe on the radiator that's what keeps that hose from wanting to slide off anyway got the 
uh, outlet pipe on and the clamp in place here so when we slide the hose on then we just grab the clamp squeeze it together and slide it over in place here in the center of the, the clamp area so let's get the hose I've got the clamp installed on the hose in the clock position that it was when I took it off it doesn't matter a few degrees one way or the other it just just so that when the hose goes on it's not in a in a twist and causing it to kink which if it kinks it it actually restricts the flow and then it will be hard on the hose under temperature and pressure it could blow out but get the clamp on there and then squeeze it together and then push it up on the radiator so I'm gonna need both hands for that you guys ain't gonna believe this but I was squeezing on that clamp and it turned right into a worm gear clamp. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Okay. Clamp's on. Just make sure that when you tighten it, your, your clamp is, is not cocked one way or the other. Keep it uh, straight up and down all the way around. And then you don't have to crank them down until you spread the freaking uh, slots in them. Uh, just good and tight and you, you, where well, you can't turn the hose on the on the pipe and and then obviously after you uh, fill it with coolant you gotta gotta check make sure there isn't any coolant dripping out and this one got the clamp back on it was I was able to squeeze it on enough and slide it that way because it, it doesn't go over a bulb there and uh, anyway we'll uh, and these bolts here just tighten them up you know German torque specs I believe it is uh, good and tight uh, you know remember they're not 5 8 bolts they're just little bitty jobbies so uh, just bring them down to where they they snug up and then give them maybe another eighth to a quarter of a turn and uh, you know just use your head boys and I would go up top and get the coolant level filled up in it Anyhow, fellas, pour it in there clean. These systems don't have filters on them. You don't want to clog up radiators and heater cores. Don't pour it in there straight. 50-50. If you have to use well water, I hope you got a, uh, a softener or something to get all that iron out of there. But you want to use really good clean water, 50-50 with your antifreeze, especially in the winter. You're going to have a problem if you don't. Well, we'll get this up to operating temperature and make sure we got all the air out of it. And uh, so we'll leave this one for you to, for your imagination. It's pretty easy to put a thermostat and a lower, lower radiator hose on, though. But uh, we've already checked. We don't have any leaks down there, so all is good. Share, like, and subscribe. You guys have a good day.